Hi guys, it's Sophie. So today I'm going to be filming part one of my December wrap up for you. I've read quite a lot of books in December so I'm just going to split it in two. But hopefully you enjoy this video. Okay, so we'll start off with Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto. This is a story about, well, two stories about um, sort of young individuals living in Japan. Um, the first one is based around this sort of loss of, of grandmothers, of mothers, um, and sort of the interconnectionality of family, I, th I think. And the second one is around the loss of a loved one. Um, so to me, they're kind of about exploring grief to an extent, uh, but also sort of the void that people we love leave um, when, when they do die. Uh, I think it was a really lovely book. I, I really enjoyed the style and I, I thought the stories were really nice. I think I prefer the second one, um, which I think is called Moonlight Bridge, Moonlight Shadow to Kitchen, which is the title story, but I did really enjoy both of those. This is one of the books I'm reading for my Five Blind Book Challenge, so I will speak about this more in the total wrap up for that for you all. And then the next one I have is Virgil, the Eclogues and the Georgics. Uh, so this was my first sort of dive back into a, an actual sort of piece of classical work for a very long time. Uh, I studied them at school but have, had never put them up on my own. Um, I found this one quite hard going. The, the Eclogues were, were great fun and I, I raced through those but the Georgics I found were quite slow. Um, but I did quite like some of the messages. I, I think I missed out on an awful lot from not understanding the historical context though. So that's something that I quite enjoyed reading about in the introduction and then referencing back so that I could learn a little bit about that. But overall it was a nice experience. I think I would tend to go for plays um, in the future because this is quite an odd sort of thing. The Georgics especially are sort of farming manuals um, and sort of allegory but I did enjoy it and I think I gave this one three out of five stars. And then the next one I have is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. So if you've watched this channel for a while you know I've been struggling with this book um, that I had it on Kindle, I had it on uh, audiobook and eventually I just bought it and I absolutely loved it. Um, I think it just shows how I do struggle with those other mediums rather than the book was bad so there's a couple other books on there I need to get and read through properly. Um, but I really enjoyed this one. It follows a group of uh, students, five students, um, who are sort of all almost outcast by their intelligence and the professor that they have who sort of starts to teach them these odd ways of living that the Greeks and Romans live by and they sort of take these things into their lives uh, along, along the story and how it progresses. Ultimately, it's a sort of who done it type thing, uh, but it's a really nice. I, I particularly like the the narrator in it. the The main character or the narrator is quite unreliable, and um, you're sort of piecing together what you think of him throughout the entire book. That's what I really enjoy about this one. Um, I would say that this is quite similar to both um, Special Topics and Calamity Physics and to A Little Life uh, in terms of sort of character driven um, plots that have that sort of secondary element going through them. So if you enjoyed those then then have a read it on the tart. I'm definitely going to pick up another one of hers at some point soon and see if I enjoy that one as much as I enjoyed this one. Five out of five stars. And the next one I have is Simon Jones' The Dig. And I don't think I could explain quite how much I enjoyed this. It was such a whim buy, and to be honest, it was just like Badger Sheep Farm, brilliant. Um, but it is so good. I, it's a really well done story, and that just makes me happy in all, all the right ways. Just the way that you have sort of little themes running throughout the book, uh, the way the ending wraps the story up, the way the characters develop. I felt when I was reading it that it would be a really good one to study, um, to see how sort of stories are put together because it's a really nice sort of example of of the sort of show hide reveal sort of techniques and about the building of the tension great fun um so if you are interested it's about sort of this badger beta and a sheep farmer and how their lives sort of mix and intertwine um, and the badger beta is a really really nasty character um, and you can't really sympathize with him to any great extent um, and the sheep farmer is someone who's going through a fair amount of personal struggles at the time um, and is all sort of tied up in a lot of different things. Um, but it's, it's only such a short book but I really enjoyed it. This probably would have been one of my top ten of the year and I just wasn't expecting it at all so I'm certainly going to go and try and find more of what he's read. Uh, I, th I thought it was really good, I thought it was really well written. And then next we have Grief is a Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. So this is a book about loss, about grief. For some reason, a lot of them are about loss and grief this month. Um, but it is uh, the sort of loss of a mother 
told through the character, who's kind of a person, of Crow, um, who not only takes the role of grief in the story, but is, is sort of a character in himself and interacts with, with things and with the characters in different ways for different people. I did enjoy this one. I think I should have read the poem The Crow before I read this um, because I did it the way around and I could then sort of go, oh, okay, that's what he was trying to do. But I think it would have worked a lot better if I'd read Crow first. Um, it would be brilliant if these came together or if you could have some kind of attachment to find Crow when you go buy these because I do think you need to read them together. Um, I did quite enjoy it. I gave it four out of five stars. Um, couldn't really hit five because I felt it's linked so much to another piece of literature that it didn't get it quite on its own. And then the next one I have to talk about is Kid by Simon Armitage. So this one I felt was quite a mixed bag. I gave it three out of five stars. Some of the poems were really accessible, really easy to read through um, and, and quite good fun. Some of them were sad. Some of them I just couldn't I didn't get, there was one that I read when I first bought it um, and sort of thought, oh no, it'll be fine, you know, you'll sit down, you'll read it, you'll go over it and you'll you'll know what he's going on about. And I've reread that one a few times since and I just can't quite connect with what is actually going on. Um, and I, I feel as though whilst poetry can sort of have that obscurity to it and you can need to do a bit of research at the same time, you should be able to find at least a theme when you're reading it through on your own. Um, it's just my personal view, lots of other people might think different things, but that would be my view on sort of poetry and how I would rank poetry. So for that reason, I gave it three out of five stars. Uh, some of the poems were very good, but others I just I just couldn't get into. And then the next one we have is John Steinbeck's Canary Row. Um, I really, really enjoyed this this story. It, again, it's a little, tiny little one, um, although the text is relatively small, but it's great fun. It, got me straight back into that sort of characters and the writing style that I loved in, of my men when I was a kid and I just thought the story was great. I think it's quite an easy story to get into, I think his writing's really easy to sit down and digest. I read this one pretty much in, in one sitting and felt that that was a really nice way to read it, it sort of just curl up with the story. Um, it's about a sort of a group of misfits who live in a sort of odd dilapidated house kind of structure that's been left to ruin almost like a warehouse um, and they are all unemployed and drunkards and um, sort of not not stupid but not necessarily the most intelligent men in the world and it's about them sort of progressing with their life through the town and with this character called Doc who is someone that they've decided is a medical practitioner he's not um, but he tends to help out with all the villagers sort of you know quarrels and um, sicknesses and he's just an altogether lovely man so it's about them trying to sort of show their appreciation for this character Doc um, as well as driving their own agendas it as I say it's pretty short um, but I thought it was good fun and I gave this one four or five stars and then the next one I have is Virginia Woolf's The Waves this is my first Virginia Woolf that I've read um, and it was really interesting it wasn't what I was expecting I don't think and I have spoken about in one of my hauls, I think, wanting to explore her writing further and see whether she plays with the same ideas in other novels. But um, it's not really about anything, it's a hard book to explain. If anything, it's about sort of people travelling through life and the way that people change as they grow older. Um, but what you have that's really interesting is, is you start in childhood with, with these characters. I think there are five characters who actually who are named who speak. Um, and from the beginning, they speak in language that would be expected of adults um, and speak in sort of metaphor. They speak in metaphor when they speak in simile and they speak to one another sort of overlapping one another and um, encompassing their own sort of values onto the story and as the story progresses it continues so as they're in school you'll have one, one boy sort of interpretation of how annoying the headmaster is and another boy sort of admiring him uh, straight off the bat after it. It, 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 she does do a good job of letting you know which character's which, which is something that I think is quite important when you're playing with characters in that way. And I thought that the the style of having sort of quite advanced sort of simile and metaphor um, in the mouths of children was really interesting. Uh, that said, I would have liked to have been able to understand a little bit more, um, to get a little bit more of a message out of it. I think. The message is just that life happens and stuff happens and at some point you'll be a child and at some point you'll be old. But for me that just felt a little bit fatalistic, I don't know. So I've enjoyed what I've read of her so far and I'm looking forward to reading Orlando and The Lighthouse uh, when I get a chance. Sorry, I'm being quite 
verbose uh, this morning when I'm speaking about these books. So I think I'm going to split it into three videos rather than just the two. Uh, so I'll finish off here and I will see you ever so soon, almost immediately, in video number two. Right, bye bye.